Hello, and welcome to another Planet Destiny video. Today we'll be taking another look at the exotic auto rifle, Suros Regime. It's fitting that a weapon whose flavor text indicates nostalgia as a weapon of war would be looked back at fondly. It has been a powerhouse weapon since the release of Destiny, and it's been a large topic of debate from both developers and the community alike. But patch after patch, Suros has seen its role diminished. So how did it end up? Starting off with the good, Suros Regime is a tricky beast to really assess. It's deceptively appealing by its base stats. Auto rifles, perhaps more than any other weapon, fit an archetype to a T. They're either high rate of fire, low impact, low rate of fire, high impact, or a nice happy medium between the two. Suros is the rare, low rate of fire, high impact variant that was a favorite of many Guardians before 1.1.1. To this end, it has the best in class impact, tying with the Vanquisher. Its base range is nearly top class 2, surpassed only by the now retired Grim Citizen 3. Base stability is a similar story, but Suros is only beaten by up for anything. Its base magazine size of 33 is also the highest available for its rate of fire impact class, a very underrated benefit for those who spend the entire magazine regularly. First row perks are designed to bolster the weaker ends of the stat profile. Thankfully, Soros doesn't need much help here, so the muzzles will largely be up to personal preference. Field Choke pushes the range into class-defying levels, while penalizing stability slightly. Linear Compensator buffs the impact and range similarly, making its recoil more predictable, while increasing the recoil slightly. Smart Drift Control greatly penalizes range, but adds a stability increase that results in almost no muzzle climb. Any of the three are worthwhile choices, our only recommendation is that you avoid trying to boost range twice. If you end up selecting Hammer Forged in the third row, Field Choke is going to have very little benefit. Conversely, Hammer Forged is an excellent offsetting perk for Smart Drift Control. The Focus Fire perk has been an iconic staple of its presence on the battlefield. Focus Fire increases Suros damage per shot while decreasing fire rate substantially. It becomes an immensely stable weapon with the ability to chain headshots on stationary targets with ease. However, there are some downsides which we'll get into a little bit later. Like several other exotics, Suros has a well thought out useful array of third row perks. High caliber rounds is a great choice for PvE, allowing you to chain stagger enemies and disrupt the steadiness of other players in PvP. Hammerforge is also a much needed perk if you want to engage distant foes with deadly precision, and Lightweight is an all around buff for those who like to strafe quickly, aim down sights faster, and jump higher. Finally, we reach Suros's signature perk. This combines an amped up version of Glass Half Full with a quirky healing proc to round out Suros nicely. It functions much the same way as Glass Half Full, though still a bit more powerful. The health regeneration is a similar mixed bag. When it procs, it can be a lifesaver, but it's difficult to do this with any regularity. Still, the Crucible is full of guardians who thank Suros for the opportunistic healing in the midst of a firefight. Backdoor patches and relentless nerfs have reduced auto rifles to all but a joke in PvE, and Suros has taken the brunt of these and more with Bungie's persistent attempts to reduce its effectiveness and prevalent usage. Statistically, Suros really only has one or two downsides. The damning weakness that Suros suffers, though no fault of its own, is the burden of being a low rate of fire, high impact auto rifle. These were apparently the grossest offenders to Bungie, as they took a monstrous hit in damage in 1.1.1. The second, more minor nitpick is its below average reload speed. A popular strategy in the Crucible for helping Suros chew through other Guardians is emptying the front half of the mag to take advantage of the Suros Regime perk instantly on firing. As a result, these Guardians need to reload much more frequently and a bit more oomph in this category would be welcome for them. Perkwise, Suros enjoys most of what it has available. However, the aforementioned Focus Fire presents problems. While it's true that its increase in damage helps negate the penalty to rate of fire, the result is a net decrease in DPS. Prior to 1.1.1 and earlier nerfs, Suros could sponge this reduction easily, as its base damage was enough to still finish PvE enemies in acceptable timeframes, and the unusually high bullet damage gave it a scary niche in PvP. Now, it simply turns Suros into a slow-firing, wet noodle. It takes almost all of the buff from focus fire to bullet damage when aim down sights to return to similar damage per shot numbers from before its nerfs, and then you're left with the slowest firing auto rifle in the game. Some PvP players simply don't upgrade it, but then you're missing out on enjoying everything that makes it an exotic. The Suros Regime perk, despite being better than Glass Half Full, is now a little underwhelming too. 
the healing could stand to be a bit more predictable and the damage per bullet is disappointing in PvE. It's possible to near guarantee health regeneration by ensuring that the kill shot is in the bottom of the half magazine, but this requires micromanagement that we feel is counterintuitive to an auto rifle's wheelhouse. For PvE, I'm not going to mince words, Soros is just bad here. Auto rifles in general are a very poor option, but Soros belongs to that unlucky class that makes it especially disappointing. It all comes down to damage. Before 1.1.1, auto rifles were already a lesser option for PvE. They could get the job done and were very forgiving for players who don't wish to use skilled weapons like hand cannons, but the ultimate tools for PvE domination were still hand cannons and scout rifles. What Soros has going for it is its maximum accuracy, meaning a combination of range and stability that gives you the ability to get critical hits reliably and consecutively. This is the debacle of assessing guns like Soros's worth, it's difficult to objectively quantify the value of accuracy, as it's so heavily dependent on the Guardian using it. This much can be said though, even with the unholy skill and relentless fire, the Soros still is gasping for the ability to do more damage. Focus fire is the thorn in its side no matter where it's used in PvE. For any repeat missions, non-playlist strikes, or patrol, you don't have to worry about the Soros regime letting you down. Enemies here are rarely shielded and will go down quickly to any weapon, meaning focus fire is less of a problem. You might even get some timely health help from its signature perk. In heroic content of any kind, nightfalls, and raids, you'll want to avoid using the Soros outright. Though it might be tempting for Crota's end hard mode, Red Death is a much better option for regenerating health and dealing damage, if you have it. Enemies are just too strong and Soros just can't keep up. In PvP, the nerf to damage has made Soros a very unappealing option. Its time to kill is now one of the longest in the game. The key to using Soros to the best of its ability in PvP now is to know its limits. You can't charge in close or even to close medium range and expect to come out okay. You're inviting fusion rifle users, shotgun users, and the last word to just wipe you out in an instant. Focus Fire creates that artificial max stability, and Hammer Forge lets you do max damage, however disappointing that max damage may be. You're still going to be outclassed by anyone running a Pulse Rifle or Thorn. They prefer a fight at the same distance as you, and their time to kill is much quicker across the board. With all this said, unless you feel comfortable getting around 80% or more headshots in a firefight, we recommend you find a different gun. You'll need to make tactical decisions when choosing your engagements, or you might find yourself ending up with 10 assists or more in a game. You're going to be at your best when just sitting behind the fray, putting a stream of bullets into whatever guardian you choose to get in your line of fire. In conclusion, it's still one of the best auto rifles in the game, but until auto rifles are improved in general, it's probably best just to use something else. It's one of the easiest to control auto rifles in the game though, so if you are an auto rifle fan, then this is definitely a decent option for PvP. In PvE, we can't recommend it. As a primary exotic in PvE, the only word that can be used to describe it is... disappointing. Unless you stubbornly love it and with its look, I mean, who could blame you, you're better off using almost any other primary, special, or heavy exotic. In PvP, it can still hang with the pack, but it's just no longer being the weapon of choice for those who top the leaderboards. I hope you found this review helpful. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe.